My last project in this big, wonderful space where I have the smart wood shop. That's right, as you know, I'm moving on and I had this one last project that I really wanted to complete. It's been on my mind and I thought if I could get it done, it'll really help me when I move on and I pick up uh, a fixer upper to be able to go ahead and have this particular tool ready to go and not have to build it when I get there. Hi, I'm Ron Polk, designer of the Smart Wood Shop, as well as a number of workbenches. If you want any of my plans, you can click on the link in the description of this video down below where you can go purchase and download immediately. So what is this final project here? It's the Smart Crosscut Jig. Now I already have a great crosscut jig that I've used for years, but I wanted to update it to work with my newer benches. My smaller benches as well as my larger benches built with the 32 millimeter system. So what I've done is create basically a three part jig that I don't have to ever calibrate. Well, maybe one part I'll have to calibrate, but I'll show you that in a minute. So it is using the 32 millimeter holes that I have on my benches. So those are either cut with a CNC or in my case, I cut them all with the PARF guide so they're absolutely computer perfect and I know that I can trust them for being square and that's all I need for my crosscut jig. So when I am working on a project, I need to break down plywood a lot and a lot of it and I need it to be accurate and I need things to be repeatable. So when I'm building kitchen cabinets or bathroom cabinets, I need the sides and, and the bottoms and the tops, everything to be the same width and the length based on what their needs are. But I need to, if I'm, if I'm doing 20 uppers, I need 40 sides and I want them to be all the exact same width and the, all the exact same length. And so to do that, I need to rip the plywood and then I need to cross cut the plywood. And I don't use big table saws, big sliding saws, and I don't use CNC. And I make a lot of the stuff in the field. I want the action that I could get with a big expensive CNC back in the shop, but in the field with my workbenches, the smart wood shop, and some great tools. So one of the things I use is uh, I use my tracks. I have multiple size tracks. I use this long one for ripping plywood. I find this to be as accurate as a very expensive sliding table saw. And so I have these add-on TSO parallel guides and I just simply dial them in to the width I want. And then I just right front, I have the plywood laid up here and then I just go, I make the cut set it down out right, right on the floor in front of me, and I can just keep going, you know, move that piece out of the way, slide the next piece up, and just keep going and get all of my material ripped to width. So I've got my um, wider for the bases, and then I have my narrower for the uppers, and then I want to get all of my links cut. So my lowers are, it's in metric, but it's roughly 30 inches for the bases. And then the uppers, uh, typically I do a taller upper, so it's a 36 or a 42. And so I need to, I want to make all of those cuts. And you know, tape measuring and cutting with the tray would just be, no matter how accurate I measure, you're going to be off and float a little bit, so I want it repeatable. So I've got my, uh, ripping my plywood down. I've been doing it with the track for years and with parallel guides, and, and that works perfectly. My crosscut jig has worked excellent, but I just wanted to have it be a little quicker to set up. I don't need to calibrate it and to work with these uh, perfect 32 millimeter bench dog holes that I have on all of my benches. So this jig, I wanted it to work with my small benches, my large benches, uh, just put them on and go. And so it's pretty simple. It's a three part and uh, I've got a stop built for it. That's the third part. So. What I do is take this rail, which gives me a, the T-track is acting as a stopper fence to put the board against. That's my one square point. And then uh, the, the stop block is just a simple block with a dado in it. And that um, will fit right into the T-track and then I can read right off the tape measure I've put on here and I have a tape measure that's both metric and imperial. 
And so I can just slide this along and read right off the body. And because stops need to be adjustable, one, when you're setting them up, you go, you get it really close, but just that micro adjustment. So this one was real simple. I just put a, a screw in, I pre-drilled, set the screw up, and I, I set it up far enough out that I could screw it in or out. So I could move it just a little bit and really dial in the stop. So it's a simple block with a screw in it, and that's really all it is. And I just move it along and set it right on what I want to cut. And I've already calibrated that. That's the one calibration. And it's ready to go. So the way I would set it up is, you know, I'd have this stored in my trailer, and I'd pull out these three pieces and put this piece on and I've, I've set up the holes and dialed the holes in to work with all of my benches and it doesn't really matter if it's out a little further a little closer it's just this 90 degree that i want and i made this a little wider one i needed the a place for the saw to ride on the track to ride on but also this extends the length of my smaller benches not only lengthwise for the length of the cuts but also in the width so I went ahead and set it up so that um, I could cut, I could cross or uh, cross cut a full width of four by eight sheet on my um, smaller bench. And obviously the, the bench dog holes, um, they ha they're hanging out in space. They would, on the bigger bench, I'd drop my stop in there. But in, in uh, this case, what I've set it up to do is I can drop the bench dog in out there for the rail to go against but to hold it square, I would go ahead and just drop in a bench dog here, line everything up, and then I cut between three of the holes, I cut a couple of dados, and that is just so that once I slam the bench dogs in, which is like, the, I'm using these uh, UJK PARF dogs, and you could use any, any bench dog, but basically I like these because uh, they, tighten in once you put them in uh, so and and they're very snug so they take a bit to get them in you have to sort of work them in but once they're in you tighten them down and they're very solid so with the with the um, other one I can go ahead and fit one of these in I just need to drop it in and that sets up my square for the track to go against and then for the the rail that will uh, set how long the piece is and and make sure that it's square to the track I do the same thing I have a few more of these and then on my smaller bench I can rip in this case I can go up to about uh, 26 and a half inches before I run out of bench dog holes to square it up so what I would do if I wanted to go wider is I would go ahead and drop that bench dog in, get everything square. That's all I need to do. I don't need to calibrate. That, putting those bench dogs in place squared me up. And I actually have an extra one. I probably don't need this in the middle. It's just a little more stability. So I could probably do it with four bench dogs. But once I have this squared up, then I can just take a clamp and on these uh, middle ones here, clamp it so that I know it's square. And then I can pull this bench dog out, relocate it to however wide I, wide I need to go to do 48. And then my track can have enough spacing between those bench dogs for the wider material to go through. And then to use it, I just throw these sacrificial strips, which I always have with me. I use them a lot for a lot of applications. But this will support the material. It, they are the same thickness as the crosscut jig. And then I just grab um, whatever plywood I have and put it up tight to the T-track and then run it to where the cut needs to be. So if I want to cut a piece at 35 and a half or let's go millimeter, go 900. Then I just butt the material up to that and the track I'm using these uh, UJK little brackets to clamp onto uh, bench dogs, but I wouldn't need them. I could just hold this track in place. But then I, I can make my cut. 
I have the saw set to the proper depth and it makes a small kerf in my crosscut jig. That's intentional to get a clean cut on the bottom. And then I can move that piece out of the way and go to the next piece. And perfect, 900, 900. So not only is it the right length, but it's perfectly square. Now we'll jump back in time and you'll get to see me build the Smart Crosscut Jig. Let's build the Smart Crosscut in four minutes by setting up the dado stack using the magnetic shims to get a perfect fit for the T-Track. Then a little ripping with the uh, Festool guide that is the only way I rip plywood anymore. Then I'm gonna break it down a little bit more and then a bit of cross cutting and then a little miter saw and I have my two main pieces cut to length and width then I'm going to uh, break the edges down so that everything's nice and smooth and now with the dado stack set up I was able to cut the dado quickly to fit the t-track and then dragging out the harf guide mark II this thing is fantastic. I don't know how I've lived without this to make the perfect 32 millimeter layout of the uh, 20 millimeter holes. And of course, I'm doing them on 96 millimeters, a multiple of three, and probably a lot more holes than I need. But in the future, I'll have a lot of flexibility if I find that I need to make adjustments that I'm not thinking about ahead of time. So I just went ahead and read them, ran them end to end. Now I'm cutting a little dado, uh, connecting three of the holes with a dado, uh, shallow dado, and that's just to give room so the clamp will drop in flush the way I showed you. And then I'm using the little um, UJK um, chamfer tool, and this cuts a little chamfer around each hole with a blade, real easy to use. And then there are um, dogs that I'm using that tighten down. They have a little option to set them up with a little chamfer collar and that collar then drops in flush so I like that a lot the t-track now I'm installing uh, that I get from Clampy systems and here I am using the same dado stack setup to make my stop block I'm testing it here a little fine-tuning I got to make sure it'll slide past the bench dogs uh, so there's been a little modification once I got in the shop I designed everything in SketchUp but I needed to uh, fine tune everything and make it work in the real world. So I figured that all out and went ahead and uh, cut it to the right rectangular length and width with that dado cut in it so that it'll slide, fits right on the T-Track nice and tight so it won't uh, pivot. Then I'm drilling the hole to uh, mount the screw for the hex head bolt that fits right into this T-Track and of course the whole uh, kind of to the edge there for the micro adjustment uh, very essential you don't want a stop block you can't adjust then i'm using my very favorite peel and stick from fast cap this is the metric and standard version um, doing more and more of my cutting with metric i'm finding that it's a lot easier as i get used to it and it is very accurate none of this uh, oh it's half a sixteenth or something like that and then uh, peeling back the tape and uh, getting it started, sticking it on just a little bit and double checking my cut. I had cut a piece uh, to an exact length and then set my stop up for that and then put the tape to that. Once it's stuck on where it goes, then peeling off the rest of the tape. And um, of course, I still have that micro adjustment if I find that I'm off just a little bit. But as it turned out, it set up perfectly and I did not need to adjust that screw but I do have that for the future then I'm just taking a scrap of plywood and really pushing the tape down I actually did a little uh, dado behind the t-track as well just a shallow dado just to keep the tape uh, place to put it in and keep it safe and then finally I did a really narrow rip and checked it with my calipers uh, to make sure that I had a perfectly square cut I do not have a complete set of detailed plans for the Smart Crosscut. If you would like to see me finish the set and put them up for sale in my store, let me know. I'd probably do them for about the same price as the original um, Crosscut jig. I am going to keep the original available because it's a little more universal 
for those that don't have the 32 millimeter system. So I'm going to look in the comments below if there is a big enough demand then I will go ahead and create a set. Probably take me a few days or a week or so and uh, when completed I would put up a video. So again let me know if you want a set or if you think the video is enough to build it in the shop for yourself. For those who have stuck around to the end of the video I have a big reveal coming. Some big changes coming this Saturday. I'm going to shoot some video get it edited and put it up as soon as possible. So keep an eye out for that video. Pretty exciting. Thanks for dropping in for the last video project recorded in this great space. I'm looking forward to what's coming up next. Hey, if you like these videos and you'd like to see more of them, be sure to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Most important, share with others. Thanks for dropping in. Have a great day.